Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's time to rise and shine. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope you're feeling fine. Good morning, get up, get out of bed. It's time to wake up, you sleepy head. Time to wake up, it's a brand new day. And we can't miss out on that day to decay. Get your day planned out to be at your best. And you gotta make sure you got the right back test. Wipe the sleep away, make sure you're awake. Cause we don't have time for fat finger mistakes. And race your condos. What's up, everyone? Welcome to this morning's live stream for Friday, August 31st, last trading day of August. Here we go. Let's make it a good one. S&P up four, NASDAQ down 15, Russell up two, Dow up 130. <laughs> you guys like that one? <laughs> Uh, the the guy who did the other the power hour one he kind of flaked out on me he didn't uh, he didn't he didn't do it so I had to find someone else so not bad not not bad all right so we got a little uh, little in between on the VIX so this is one of those times where you just kind of make a decision. As far as what you're going to do personally i'm going to do an am iron condor am ratio my thursday version see what happens i may mix in a discretionary rick but i won't do it at the open i've also got a bnb &B from yesterday that i've got to close and so that'll be it at the open Definitely the Dick K special, 925 Central. Looks like I'll be doing a quiet lunch potentially as well at 1045 Central. So that's what's on my zero DTE plan for the day. All right, got about two minutes till the bell. Yeah, so when the VIX froze at about, when it freezes at 15 until the bell, it's down 0.29%. ES has gone down a couple points since then, so... In my mind, VIX is going to open down less than 0.25%. So it's going to be stronger than 0.25. So that's why I'm that's why I'm leaning towards the AM ratio. I mean, it's such a it's such a borderline thing that either way you go, I mean, you just got to make a decision. It's not the not the wrong decision. It's just that's what I've decided. So first order business is I'll buy my longs for my AM ratio. And then I will be looking for the closest to $4 on each side, which looks like it's going to be 10, 20, 30, 35 wide. Thursday uses a $26 stop, so I'll need to change that. But otherwise, 30 seconds to the bell. Uh, 
All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Ding, ding, ding. I filled in my lungs. Ten, twenty, thirty, yeah, thirty five wide. Price is bouncing. All right, filled on my AM ratio. Next thing I need to do is get out of my BNB. Got into that at eight bucks, trying to get out at nine. Trading right around there. Let's try 8.95. Build at eight ninety five on my B and B, so nice winner there. Get that posted. VIX is showing down 0.14%. Expected move for the day, about 20, a little over 21. So about 38 to the upside, 45, 38. Ninety four to the downside. All right, I am in. I'm in the uh, 4540, 4505 are my strikes for my AM ratio. I was looking at my uh, all my zero DTE stuff last night. Um, you know, power hour, I'm, I'm in the red a little bit for August, I think by like 10, 10 K or something like that. Uh, all AM ratios, um, pretty, pretty flat. Um, as far as PNL wise, a little bit, a little bit green, I think plus a thousand or something like that. And then, but so the big winners for August for me were, quiet lunches and kind of more late morning, early afternoon trades. So midday, Dick K's quiet lunches and uh, like the PM, PM iron condors were the big winners. Plus, I don't know, 30, 35 K or something like that on those ones. So still, still a nice month for zero DTE, but it's, it's interesting how that shifts, right? I mean, you know, 
there's there's a while where the mornings just were killing it and there's a long time where power hour was just killing it now for this month is the midday which i think is why it's so critical to make sure that you are not just focused in one area because if that goes bad everything goes bad Dick K already popping profits on his fly. Nice. Two and a half bucks. I'm afraid you missed it, Theta Junkie. Don't worry, it'll be played every morning going forward. If we get to a point today where we just kind of, well, I don't know. Going into Labor Day week, I was going to say, if we get to a point where we just kind of chop around in a pretty narrow range, I may consider a discretionary Rick, but I'm not sure I will. On second thought, going into Labor Day weekend, and a lot of times you just get some kind of drifty, drifty back and forth, grind higher type action going into a long weekend. So I probably actually will hold off on that now that I think about it. VIX under 14. Yeah, at a same same. Same thought, Morrow. I'm going to hold off on time flies till next week. I think the portfolio margin versions are fine, but the shorter duration ones I'm going to hold off on. Ruining your best month ever. So, but you should be, you should have been po net positive on flies. Right, Marl? Are you saying those two took you out? Yeah, Kirsch, I posted the one, two in the calendar channel. Yeah, for my Thursday version, I got a $26 stop. So I mentioned this in Power Hour, but and I'll be either by the end of today or tomorrow, I'll, I'll put out my detailed uh, trade plan for September, but I, uh, I think I'm going to stick with fixed stop losses as much as trailing stops feel good. I just, uh, I can't, 
I can't justify it based on actual results. So I'm going to stick with fixed stops for all three tranches. Well, Mauro, that's awesome. It's your best month ever, man. For Aug for this month to be your best month, that's pretty solid. Cause that this was a tough month. Yeah, I know ZS was getting close. Let me uh let me double check based on mine. So if I get out of the puts for, say, nine bucks, and if I get out of the call for fifteen fifty, oh yeah, we are at fifty percent. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Actually, I don't know why I closed those separately, but I meant to just check the prices separately. You can close the ratio strangle in one trade. Talking about our ZS here, non-zero DTE related. All right, so just posted that in the option selling. Uh, Vegas Michelle, I just got a note in my moderation channel that your message got deleted because you attempted to send mass emojis. <laughs> too many, too many hand clap emojis, apparently. Vegas Michelle. Yeah, I would not agree with that, Morrow. Oh, uh, look, Eli snuck it by. I don't know. Moderator must just have something against you, Vegas, Michelle. Yeah, Mauro, I, I completely disagree with the idea of traders hitting, hitting a certain level of profit and then stopping for the rest of the day, week, month. I just, I think that's... I just do not agree with that one bit. I don't know if I can adjust the moderation emoji setting or not. But, but yeah, I just got to notice that I guess Michelle got put in the penalty box. Yeah, I just think, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I think, and this is, 
theoretical, but you know, profits and losses come in clusters a lot of times, right? So if you if you take the losses that can come in clusters, like say power hour August, right? Versus, but if profits come in clusters, then you cut yourself off from the profits. You know, I just, then overall your, your uh, p &L curve is, is going to be hurt by that. Same thing for like a, a day trader or a scalper, you know, it's like, once I hit my profit target, I'm, I'm done for the day. Well, well, if that's, if that's the day that you're in the, in tune with the market, if you're in the zone, if you're, if you're doing well, you're, you know, if the market conditions are correct, keep pushing to me, you know, SPX making new highs on day. MES looks like we're going to need to roll up our puts on this one. Puts got in at 34. Should be trading around 16 ish. No, still 17, 18. All right, I'll hold off. We got a couple ducks left, one in QQQ, one in SPX. Yeah, you know, I went into this week saying I'm going to go light on calendars. I already had the TGIF. Did, you know, the six, seven was up nicely. So I thought, well, okay, maybe we're not going to get the same holiday week calendar issue that we do sometimes. And then sure enough, it happened. Took away the six, seven profits and TGIF ended up being a loser. So yeah, it's the, these, these big holiday weeks, man, going into those calendars have a tendency to suffer. All right, SPX poked its head up for a new high on day and then came back in. I'm um, just doing a 5.7 or a 6.7. Actually, I forgot to put that on my, my morning update. Take a look at the uh, calendar for next week. So Monday's closed. So any three fives, three sixes, three sevens are out. Yeah, so I'll just do a six seven. Just a six, seven for me. Are you a five, seven or six, seven or both? Update my, my morning post here. Potential new trades, six, seven, DT. There we go.
So my six, seven, I like to put those on at 215. Pretty tight range for SPX so far. Eleven points. Yep, I'm doing a six seven. Yeah, on Friday. Sorry, not today. <clears throat> Getting ahead of myself. It's the last day of August, not, not the last day of the week. No calendars today. All right, getting a little tiny bit of decay on the AM ratio. Not too much. Uh, let's see. All right. So we got a NDX. It's pushing up towards its break even. I'm going to go ahead and add a calendar on that one. Turn that into a double.
So I'm adding a 15625 call calendar on our NDX calendar. All right, just posted that NDX trade in the calendar channel. SPX is kind of drifting higher. S&P up 10. NASDAQ up 50. Russell up 8. Dow up 108. All right, Dick K, are you getting nervous yet? Have you picked out my my shipment? Looks like Dick K is not on anymore. I mean, I'm not eating my seafood yet, but I am. I'm I'm sniffing it.
Oh, sorry, I had to step away for a minute. Uh, when I was looking at the puts, they're not, yeah, they're right around 50. I'm going to wait. Mine were, it, it was a little bit less than 50 on mine. I need to be trading under 17. Currently trading, yeah, right around 17, a little bit, little bit above, so I'm going to wait. My Thursday quiet lunch is gap up max 0.2, gap down max 0.5, gap move up max 0.2. So we'll see where it's at. But we do have the Dick K special coming up here in about 15 minutes. I don't have a VIX filter on mine. It's in the trade plan, Krish. It's on the sheet, my friend. That is there, so it's just a click away. The Dick K special is exactly like Dick K's Dick K special. Except I don't do as big a size as he does. So here it is. So or here I'll. There's my Dick K special. Did I add a Thursday quiet lunch mid-month? Maybe I did, Krish. Let's see. Let me find it. Oh, wait a minute. Hmm, that's interesting. My uh, the back test I'm looking at for my quiet lunch Thursday shows entering Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. So that doesn't work. <laughs> that's not what I'm looking for. 
I thought there's a quiet lunch Thursday I had though. It's like quiet lunch, except for Thursday. All right, so maybe I'm not doing a quiet lunch. I think I may have accidentally, I must have accidentally added that to my sheet. All right, so no quiet lunch. Yeah, I got nothing else on Thursday. Dick K special and then power hour. Unless Tim Weiss. Tim just posted something on Thursdays. Is there anything in there? Let's see. There's the, he's got his 1025 overnight VIX move up minimum of 4%. So that wouldn't qualify. He's got his AM iron condor, P2H, gap down max 0.5%, move up minimum 1%. Okay, that's not going to qualify, most likely. All right, his quiet lunch Thursday. VIX overnight move up minimum 2%. That won't work. Yeah. So I don't think I don't see anything good for Thursday. Our 6E short strangles coming in, showing some profit. We've got an ES hedgehog that we've got, I think, eight days left on. Yeah, so we'll take that off tomorrow or, well, Looks like it's showing not too much risk and potentially holding. We'll see what that I think did have a nice profit, but with this big rally kind of took that away. I actually have a Costco trip planned this evening as well. I'm going to wait till after market close though.
Big Costco day, huh? Thursday's Costco day. Yep, I saw that Michael Todd, but wouldn't qualify, assuming unless we have a big, uh, well, yeah, the VIX overnight move didn't disqualify that. But if you use Instacart, Trader Bianca, you miss out on all the impulse buys <laughs> that it sucks you into, which is my favorite part. I bought a set of like $2,000 Cutco knives on an impulse buy at Costco. It was on display. I bought a Traeger smoker at Costco on an impulse buy. Oh, yeah. Kids love the samples for sure. That's the only reason they, they like to go. I'm starting to see some decay up about 25% on the AM ratio. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure I've ever left, left Costco with less than a $400 tab. All right, my friends, I'm going to put on the BitK special here in about 10 minutes and we'll sign off for the morning, but to get that on before we go. I'm disappointed BitK's not on here. He didn't want to hear it with the market being up, I think is what the deal is. Oh, he is here. <laughs> Are you signed in under your wife's name on Zoom? I don't see you. Oh, iPad. Got it. So are you getting nervous yet, Dick Hay? This market looks strong. Kind of grinding and grinding. To get my spreadsheet ready, I'm still using my spreadsheet entry for the uh, Dick K special. I like it, I like using it better than the templates.
once you enter, you set up saved orders so you can just submit them. Saved orders in the in toss or on your spreadsheet. Okay. Yeah, what I've what I've been doing is just entering with the with this with the first triggers three OCOs with off the spreadsheet and just closing out the uh the shorts and then as soon as the you know if I hit a profit target then I'll just if the if the longs have any value then I'll just close them. Ugh, Vix in the 13 handle. Need to get these traders back from their summer vacations. Kids are back to school. Let's get in there. Create some havoc. Get this volatility pumped back up. No, I don't, I don't have that filter. I mean, I'll, I'll look at it. I just have the max 30. I just think in, in lower, lower premium environments, the Rick, I mean, I know there's, I, I know there's periods where it has not done well, but I, you know, Selling premium in low premium environments doesn't work as well as high premium. So theoretically, buying premium like Rick should work well, just, you know, assuming your other filters are on point. So I don't, I don't like the minimum VIX filter for that one. But... I'll, uh, that's just a, a theoretical comment. So I haven't, I haven't done enough testing on that to show the, the back test. I mean, it, I know it filters out a lot of trades. bring that back after we get into DKS. It's my DKS reminder. It's looking like 45, 45 on the call side. 45, 30 probably on the puts.
maybe 45s on the calls, 25s on the puts. Meech, nice, nice of you to grace us with your pre presence today. Glad to see you could get away from your fancy new job. Or maybe he's just in the chat. Could be forty twenty five. I'm going to go forty five. Forty five twenty five. Forty five, twenty five. Get nine eighty five. Filled at nine eighty five. Could have gone, looks like you could have gone forty five or forties on the call side. I went to forty fives. So profit target number one is at 815 for me. All right, so before I go, last thing, I just want to, let's look at uh, the Rick minimum VIX filter. So this is something I have not looked at at all for my plan for uh, September yet. So here's my standard Rick. Max VIX 30, VIX overnight moved down minimum 0.25%. So if we just add a minimum VIX of, what'd you say, 15?
15. So I've got an 85% win rate, 9.9 .9 mar. Eighty-nine percent win rate, ten mar. Yeah, that does test better. Let's see. Uh, overall profit, one forty-one versus. Um, there's something else I was just getting ready to check. What was it? What was, um, what was, uh, oh yeah. Number of trades. Yeah. Okay. So that went, that went down a little bit, which is fine. Better results, less trades. That's a good thing. Um, let me see. Where is uh? See if I can find. What other filters or what other differences did Tim have? I think he. I think he was choosing different deltas too, wasn't he? Let's see if I have it. Okay, he's got different ones for Monday, different ones for Tuesday, Wednesday, different one for Thursday. So he goes 55, 20, 30, 35. Fifty five, twenty. 30. That's 35. Let's see what that does. Okay, so without the filter it actually does a little bit worse on my standard one Yeah, so it looks like I, I like my deltas better. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not sure what Tim was not sure what Tim liked about the the uh, difference in deltas, but I like the original 50, 20, 35, 35. But you can't argue with the minimum VIX 15 filter. That just means I'm not gonna be able to trade Rick if premium stays low though. <laughs> Me and Rick, we've 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 grown a bond, you know. 
But Rick, you're just going to have to stay on the shelf, I guess, until volatility comes back up. All right, that just means less Rick memes, I guess. Got to do what you got to do. All right, well, cool. Thanks, Kelvin. That helps save me some time going through different stuff in my uh, Rick planning for September. T1 for DKS is at 815. Spread's currently trading at 870, 865. So getting some pretty decent little quick contraction there. All right, my friends, I'm going to jump off here. We'll be back for power hour to end the month with a big win and to settle this bet between the Bollinger Band master and me. All right, guys, take care. See you at power hour.